said you've been affected by putting the CEOs like Bank of America, Moynihan, and these people like David Solomon, feet to the fire to solve our gentrification, homelessness. I mean, this has been very effective. Well, what I was trying to put it in a context with, if you bring in them and you hold them accountable, they can move the needle as they're doing in DNI. I think we can do the same thing with homelessness. It's not just one, even though I'm very proud of the legislation I've written, it's also bringing everybody in, and we heard testimony in here today, you know, with the young man with his son being evicted. Yeah. It takes all of us to look at what, what the legislation says, how can we change it, how can we put more money in, how can we work with those individuals who are private sector people to be part of... Like, like financial instability, one of the things of gentrification is we have those Opportunity Zones tax credit, but there's nobody doing quality control. These bankers like Wells Fargo should say, no, if you're not going to bring something to the neighborhood, value added, no, you won't get the loan and, and, and stop the, the lending there. Absolutely. I had a bill yesterday on the MDI, the Minority Depository Institutions, and one of the things we're doing is matching them up with some of those big banks. So it'll provide opportunities for minority-owned banks who serve more of the folks like Mr. Williams and others. You know who's interested in the minority-owned banks? You'd be amazed. The big European banks, Santander, UniCredit, because they see it as a way to get into the U.S. market on the corporate levels. They don't have to rebuild a brick and mortars. One is Citizen Trust in Atlanta. Okay. Others are like Industrial Bank and other banks. Well, as long as we hold them accountable that they're helping establish or the established minority banks serve the underserved. Oh yeah, uh, that's where they see the, the yeah. opportunity zone and the exactly. growth in America. It's a 1.5 trillion. Support that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. And what we should be able to do because we are moving the needle. When you look at, we have brought every president and CEO who started at the top of the largest banks in this country and they all chose us. And the question is not us dictating to them or checking the box. But for us to say, you tell us how you're moving the needle. Because you understand when you don't have, when you lack diversity or when you're not inclusive. And we started at the top. We said, let's take a look at your board. Who's on your board? Because if we're in a room, if you put a diverse group of individuals beyond race and ethnicity and gender, so if you have younger folks, if you have veterans, if you have rural folks, if you have a democracy within your board, it makes a difference. And that's the same way I look at homelessness. If we're all engaged, if you just take the social service entities and say, that's your problem, and you don't take the funding, and if you don't take the diversity of the issues, then it won't move. But if you demand the people at the top, i.e. as to housing, the secretary of housing, challenging, making them aware, sending them letters like I've been able to do. In corporate America, I can tell you the needle is moving. People are responding, they have to respond to reports. Now it also helps that we have subpoena power. <laughs>